Magana town that is situated in Kikuyu in Kiambu County is a busy trading center. And this happens to be where the famous Magana flower farm that is owned by former health and housing minister, Dr. Magana Njoroge Mungai, is located. Dr. Mungai takes us for a tour of the 19-hectare flower farm. He has passion for the roses. But behind the roses is a story of an old man who wore many hats during Kenya's founding president, Mze Jomo Kenyatta's administration. Apart from the health and housing docket, he later headed the internal security and defense docket, then foreign affairs ministry, and in the regime of Kenyatta's successor, Daniel Arap Moi, he served as environment minister. Describe to us Kenyatta's style. He was polite, he was firm, he was strong, and of course he demanded that you accomplish your work. President Kenyatta's way was to call you, talk to you, correct you, and guide you. But of course if you didn't, uh, then you are like going to meet a lion. His eyes became big and red. <laughs> <laughs> you lie today, there is Mr. Ngala Mwendo here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mungai remembers the first cabinet with nostalgia as he names each of them in this photograph. Mr. Ngala Mwendo. The first labor minister, Eliud Ngala Mwendo, who hails from Kitui, is 89 years old, while Joseph Duncan Otiende, who hails from Vihiga County, is 96 years old. Otiende was Dr. Njoroge Mungai's teacher at Alliance High School. Besides the three independence cabinet ministers who are still alive in this photograph, others are Charles Njonjo, the first attorney general, and Duncan Degwa, the first secretary to the cabinet and head of public service. Dr. Mungai, who holds a Bachelor of Science degree in medical sciences from Fort Hare University in South Africa, and a doctorate degree in medicine from Stanford University in California, says the government's priority in the health sector at independence was to decentralize health services. Kenyatta's motto then was to eradicate illiteracy, hunger and disease. But 50 years on, challenges in the health sector are many, and affordable health care is beyond the reach of many Kenyans. Population of Kenya has increased. Missionaries did give free medicine, but these things are not going to be obtained very free. We'll also have to make our own contribution. Later, as Minister for Foreign Affairs, Dr. Mungai was instrumental in Kenya's lobbying that saw the United Nations Environment Program headquarters come to Nairobi. Dr. Mungai, who doubled up as Kenyatta's personal doctor, says they would get time off to relax, so to speak, especially during Christmas on the beach in Mombasa. In this photograph, behind Kenyatta is Dr. Mungai. Next to Kenyatta is former Senate Speaker Timothy Chokwe. And on the right is Tom Boyer, who was the Minister for Constitutional Affairs. And in this one, next to Kenyatta is Dr. Mungai. Fast forward. When Kenyatta passed on in Mombasa in 1978, Dr. Mungai, who was heading the team of doctors that looked after his health, was in Nairobi and with Kenyatta at the time of his death in Mombasa was Dr. Eric Mongola. But who, what killed the Kenyatta? He died. Of what? That's all I'm going to discuss now. There are theories of old age. Well, he was 89. That is not here. Tomorrow we feature former Labour Minister Ngala Mwendwa.